Okay, so welcome to this video on painting an elder wraith knight. Um, so I've begun with undercoating the whole miniature in Mephiston red. So after I'd assembled it, I basically just sprayed it Mephiston red. I didn't put a white or a black undercoat on this. I used uh, just pure Mephiston red spray uh, because I wanted to keep the paint really, really thin. After I'd undercoated it in Mephiston red, I started to airbrush on um, Agrax Earthshade, as you can see a little bit of it blotched up here. But what I tried to do was create a gradient, uh, you can see it here, um, of Agrax Earthshade and Mephiston Red. With that I made sure that I didn't undercoat the whole model in Agrax, I was only spraying sort of the lower areas of each uh, pad. So these areas this area down there, down there, um, towards the left and the right of the feet. A few other areas at the back probably also got a bit of agrax um, towards these areas there and there. Um, after I'd done that, I then used Evil Sun's Red um, and I very, very lightly airbrushed just the tips of these plates um, to give it a sort of higher red. I wanted to keep the miniature mainly Mephiston red um, with Agrax in the shade. I've also kept the head fairly white so I kept that off um, while I was doing this. But obviously since I've glued it on I've given it a little bit of a touch up in red here um, which has caught the white. That doesn't really matter at this stage because that's going to be painted white again. So to begin with now, what we're going to do is we're going to add on Corn Red Airbrush. Um, this is going to be hand painted on. And what I'm going to do is water it down and I'm going to sort of glaze uh, the, the lower areas of each plate, blending it in to the crevices. Once I've done that, I'm then going to either apply Rhinoxide into these dark lines and then finally probably Agrox Shade, painting it with a brush this time. Okay so I've just finished the corn red glaze. Um, a couple of things about this, you have to keep the paint very very thin so it's going to be mainly water that you're adding on so you need to keep a really thin layer of water. If you don't keep a thin layer um, it will pull a little bit. So you can see um, around here it's pulled a little bit um, but with that that's not too bad because you can go over it again and build up the layer until you get to a more of a corn red colour. So around here I've applied it which is quite corn red around there, um, different areas around there and especially applied it to this plate and this lower plate uh, at the top. So once that's all been done, then we're going to add the Rhinox Hide Glaze. This Rhinox Hide Glaze is mainly going to be used for these sort of crevices areas and very lower parts of the plates. Okay, so I've just finished the Rhinox Hide uh, sort of glaze. Um, and you can see in these sort of areas here it's gone much darker and now the model has more depth to it. You can also see this area in the middle there that I've gone over in the Rhinox side, especially most of this bit here gave quite a strong wash. Um, I'm mainly going just round the edges of all the little crevices. Um, I gave the feet a bit more Rhinox hide and the next uh, stage now is to add on a highlight around all the plates in Wild Rider Red. Okay, so I've made some more progress with the model now. Um, to begin with, I have now done all of the highlights pretty much in Wild Rider Red, as we can see at the bottom here, going around all of the armor plates. After I did that, I then used a Vallejo undercoat in black, uh, obviously to just do out all of the sort of inner parts which is supposed to be black, which you can see on the box. 
so the paint that I used for that is this uh, Vallejo black um, which is just an undercoat but it goes on very nicely once I'd done that I took off the head and I undercoated it with an airbrush in administratum grey after I did that I used another air paint by Games Workshop this time I used Ulfian grey and I lightly airbrushed uh, just the tips of the head. After I'd done that, I just painted the face plate in black. Finally, I've added on three stripes onto this middle plate and two stripes onto this lower left knee pad. The next stage is uh, to complete this model. I'm going to add on now the transfer to this plate here and I think there's one or two other ones which go on. So to do that I'm mainly just going to put the transfers in water and then maybe use Lamian medium to apply them to the model. Okay so I've added on now the transfers as you can see I've added a little one there here here and even one to the gemstone. Now, the gemstone was painted with base coat in Caliban green, and then I used Lauren Forest to feather into the green towards the bottom. We also painted uh, these two gemstones on the um, sort of backpack. And finally, I used a Moot green highlight and Skarsnik green and Warpstone glow pre layer highlight in the sort of middle. After I'd done that I then added the transfer on top and now I'm about to apply a glaze to kill off the white and turn it green. I've also added a Nuln Oil Gloss onto the helmet. Okay so here we have the finished uh, Wraith Knight. Um, as you can see it looks spectacular uh, it's come out much better than I thought it would, mainly because I've spent a long time doing the reds. Um, even on this sort of chest plate at the top there, you can see there's a distinct uh, gradient in the two reds, and that is not the lighting. Um, so most of those red gradients that you can see there are pretty much uh, been painted on to give it that effect. Um, you're going to be learning how to do this obviously in this tutorial, try and pay attention to what I'm saying because I didn't actually show that much uh, of the actual paint in the red but I think that is really important that you do all of the glazes. Uh, don't forget to like and comment on the video saying which uh, model you want painted next. I do have the whole range of Warmer 40k and I am painting them at the moment. If you want to subscribe, we're currently going to be doing ongoing a live stream um, throughout the week which is tied to the foreign exchange markets. So basically what happens is as the price uh, moves on these uh, financial derivatives, it's going to change the um, where the models are positioned on our massive, massive board, um, which is partly uh, real Warhammer 40k composed and also partly computer generated. So it's a bit like Dawn of War but we're using 40k miniatures and we've mag uh, mass uh, just made it massive. Um, so it's uh, very very big. It can probably take uh, 100,000 points to a million points of Warhammer 40k. Um, we're not going to be playing it at the top level um, so it's going to be played at all different types of levels so you'll get to see the miniatures in loads and loads of different angles and lots and lots of videos and it will be um, obviously real world so it will um, be uh, tied to the financial markets and also it will give you a lot of insight into how we go about predicting um, algorithmic calculations and obviously all of the uh, rules will still be applied from Warhammer for this game so it's a bit sort of reverse engineering in that take.